Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Ar-Rahmanir Rahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nastawim Ihdina Surat Al-Mustaqim Surat Al-Ladina Na'amta Alayhim Gairi Al-Maktubi Alayhim Wala Bahalin Amin Okay, thank you so much uh, for the word of prayer. Let me hope people are going to maintain the discipline. I don't want to mute you because I want us to interact. So I'm not going to mute you. But in case I see people making a lot of noise, then I'll go on to force myself to lock you. Okay. Uh, just confirm that my screen is on. Is everyone seeing my screen? Is everyone seeing my screen? Okay, good. Now, what are we going to do? Uh, last time we were looking at how do we form inequalities from the words. So we looked at how we form inequalities from the words, but today we are going to be looking at first, we are going to look at how do we determine an inequality? When we are given a graph, how can we extract an inequality? from the graph up to this point. So that is our first question. So I'm going to ask you, uh, this is a UNEB question of 2016, and I want us to first learn how do we deal with such when we are given uh, an inequality already drawn and they want us to determine. So the first thing I'm going to ask you one is the first thing whenever you have these numbers one, you need to know how to determine the equation of a line. That is the first thing you need to know. You need to know how do I determine the equation of a line. Now, if at all we are finding the equation of a line, we have what we call the major points. That means that when you look at the equation of a line, it's given in the form of y is equal to mx plus c. Implying that now, you need to know what is your gradient, and secondly, what is your intercept. Those are the two main things that you need to know. So I'm going to ask you people to use the chat to, to write what is the formula for finding gradient. How do we obtain a gradient? So type in the chat how you obtain the gradient. Everyone, the formula for finding the gradient of the line. Okay, okay, very good. Okay, very good, that is it, yes. So we know that to find the gradient, gradient, we shall have the change in Y out of the change in x. And we know very well that the change in y is given by y2 minus y1 out of x2 minus x1. Now, what do you do? You always look at your graph, identify two points along that line. The first coordinate I'm going to identify is this coordinate. The second coordinate I'm going to use is this coordinate here. Oh, so I think people may make a noise. Let me mute everyone faster. Hello. Let me mute such that we may not have that background noise. So the first thing you have, you identify the coordinates you are going to use. So the first coordinate, type in the chat, the two coordinates are labeled blue. What are those coordinates? Type in the chat, 
what are those coordinates? Type in the chat, what are those coordinates? Which coordinates are you seeing? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Someone is saying two, three. Akram is saying zero, three. Okay. Please look in the chat. So the first thing we know that we have treated off this coordinate. So this coordinate here is zero, three, and this coordinate here is two, zero. So those are our two coordinates. We have zero, three, and we have the second coordinate as two, zero so those are the two coordinates that we have very good people have given the answers that is good now that means that you are going to go and label them that this is my x1 y1 this is my x2 y2 but i not find a graduate which is m we say y2 minus y1 out of x2 minus x1 so our y2 is zero minus y1 which is three out of x2 which is two minus zero so we shall end up with negative three out of two so this is our gradient please confirm that everyone we are on the same page in case you have understood yes say yes we can continue Okay. Okay. Yes, people are there. Now, after obtaining your graduate, we go on and we substitute. So we shall have y is equal to mx plus c. So now where there is graduate, I will put that. So I'll have y is equal to negative 3 out of 2x plus c. But one of the points that we chose uh, for this line was the point that was uh, 0, 3. So this is my x coordinate and this is my y coordinate. So what am I going to do? Where there is x, I put 0. Where there is y, I put 3. So I'll have 3 is equal to negative 3 out of 2 times 0, then plus c. So this will give me 3 is equal to 0 plus c, and therefore c is equal to 3. Alternatively, the y-axis is the one this point here is what we call the intercept. So you can just read out from the graph that my intercept is three. So that means that our equation is going to be y is equal to negative three out of two x, then plus three. Now this is your equation of the line. Please confirm that you, everyone we on the same page. Has everyone understood how we have gotten the equation? Has everyone understood how we have gotten the equation? If yes, then you let me know. Oh, Mikova, okay, Mikova, okay, Mikova, I'm seeing your hand, ask. Unmute and ask. Well, sir, I, I didn't understand. I'm sorry, I came a little bit late. Mikova, do you know how to get the equation of a line? No. Have you, do you know how to get the graduate of a line? Yes. How do you get it? Um, it's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Uh -huh, very good. Now, whenever you are given, don't mute. So whenever you are given the line, first identify any two points along that line you have. And now for this case, we identified this coordinate 0, 3, and we identified the second coordinate as 2, 0. So after identifying, we went on and found its graduate, and this was the graduate. So now you go back to the equation of that line, and you say y is equal to mx plus c. We know very well that where m is, is the graduate, and the c is the intercept. So you substitute, so you get negative 3 out of 2x 
plus C is equal to Y. So to obtain C, the intercept, you can read it off directly from your graph. That point where your line cuts the Y axis is what you call a Y intercept. So this point was three. So where did it C? I'm going to put three. So I'll have negative three out of two X plus C three is equal to Y. Alternatively, alternatively, you can use any of the points you have obtained for the line and substitute here and you make C the subject and you get the value of value of C. I don't know whether now we're okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, the next thing we do is to find out that inequality sign. Now, in order for us to find in the inequality sign, like last time I was telling you that to find out which region are you going to shade, you have to test. Now, still, we are going to test two regions. We are going to test this region A or B. So kindly, let's choose. I want, we are, let's use uh, region A. I want you, I want you people to choose a point in a coordinate in the region A. One and one. One and one. So one and one is here. So we can use that point one and one. Now, after obtaining that point, what do you do? You come in your equation here and you put in that figure that this is X, this is Y. So I'll have my Y as one is equal to negative three out of two times one plus three. So this will equal to one is equal to negative three out of two times one is negative three out of two plus three. So this is the same as one is equal to, now you add negative three out of two plus three, what do you get? So negative three out of two uh, plus three, you'll end up with, uh, you'll end up with three out of two. Now you ask yourself, which sign am I going to place here that fits? Because what did they tell us? They told us to find the inequality which is represented by the unshaded region. So the unshaded region is here. So you ask yourself, which inequality fits here to make this inequality true? Those who don't know this is one is the same as 1.5. So please, I want people to put in the chat, which inequality are we going to put? To set to for this one to be true. Uh, type in the chat which inequality one is equal to 1.5. In case they ask you to put a sign, which sign are you going to put? Please type in the chat the sign you are going to put. Use the chat, use the chat. Aha, uh -huh. Akram is saying less than. Uh -huh. Good, thank you, Akram. What about the rest? What are you saying? So for me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, okay, very good. Uh -huh. I've seen what I wanted. So when you look here, this sign is going to be a less that that one is less than 1.5 then the next thing you are going to do you are going to ask that this line here is a bordered line so meaning to satisfy i'll use an equal since the points along that line satisfy the inequality so that means the sign we are going to use is going to be y is less or equal to 1.5 now after doing so you come and you write your equation that like my equation was y is equal to three to x plus three. So the inequality you are going to substitute here is going to be y less or equal to negative three to x plus three. I don't know whether people have understood that. Let me hope that is very clear. So that's how you do. Yes, okay, very good. 
So has everyone finished writing? Please confirm in the chat whether you are finished and then we'll look at something. Have we finished writing and we'll continue? Okay, okay, we are going to now continue. So that's something I wanted you to, to take note of, but allow me, uh, let me ask you to take a screenshot of this number. You will try out for me. You will try out this number in 2015. So take a screenshot of that, then you will try it out. Okay, oh, now we have taken, okay, people have finished taking a screenshot, good. Okay, okay. Now, uh, still, we are going to go and look at another number. Now, uh, as we start our linear programming, when they talk about linear programming, uh, in real life, we have resources, but at times we don't know how can we minimize the resources that we have. We have limited resources, meaning that we must use those little resources we have efficiently. And at times we have a lot, take an example, you have a lot of time, meaning that every second you have, you must maximize it well before you reach your final exams. So what does it mean? It means that we need to know how do we use what we have in plenty and how do we minimize wastage? And in order for us to do that, that's where we bring in what you call linear programming. So linear programming is applied in things concerning, when you look at those electrical uh, lights, uh, those ones that uh, are set at load sides, they apply this. When you go to schools, they, when they're making their budgets, they apply linear programming. Also in our day life, we shall apply what you call linear programming. So I'm going to ask you, your heading now is linear programming, and you are going to first write this for me. What, what is linear programming? And then after we are going to make this simple summary. Let me hope we are together. Write linear programming and after, we make this summer. So let's write. So write and then after make a, that summary. So I'm going to be waiting for you. Let me know whether you are finished.
if at all you have finished, let me know. And then we continue. Okay, are people writing? Let me allow to unmute. Please let us know. Are we writing? Feel free to respond. Okay. Okay, so some are finished, others are not yet, okay. So give them some more few minutes. Okay. Okay, good. Now, uh, one thing, we are going to have what you call a feasible or what you call an accessible region. Now, in inequalities or in programming, regions that satisfy an inequality or a, a problem, we call it a feasible region. Then two, we are going to have what you call an objective function. And when we talk about an objective function, that is the one that gives us an alternative of the decision we have to make. Take an example, you want to transport children to maybe to a hotel, you want to transport them to a tour. You need to know, how can I arrange them? Can I take five coasters and two buses? Or can I take two buses and maybe five, five, uh, five taxis? So that means that in order for you to come up with the, with, the, uh, with the solution, it means you need to have that function where you are going to feed and then find out what is the maximum amount I would have to use if I told them to use this option. So it is where the different options we have obtained are filled in in order for us to come up with it with the solution. And now I want, we are going to look then, I want you to take note of number five. Number five is very important, that whenever you are dealing with programming, you can never have negative answers. Always 
your regions are going to be positive regions. So these two inequalities are very important. We call them the non-negative constraints. They are very, very important. So those inequalities of X is greater or equal to zero and Y or greater to zero, those are always the first inequalities that we shall always be writing whenever we are extracting data from our problem. So the non-negative inequalities are the ones that will show us that the region we are going to get can never be found in the negative region. Whenever you draw your graph, let me say I've drawn my graph, this region here and this region down can never have your solution contained in that region. So always your solutions are going to be contained in the first quadrant here. So for whatever graph you draw, you'll find that your inequalities are found within the first quadrant. In case you have a question, please feel free to ask. In case you have a question, feel free to ask. So after that, I want you now to write the steps that we are going to take when we are solving a linear programming problem. So write those steps. Okay, have people finished? Please let me know in the chat whether you have finished right to those steps. Okay, I want to just check whether people have been all almost done. Okay. Okay, uh huh. Okay. So, uh, okay, those are the few steps. And I want us now to look at an example of now we are going to deal with them. So, the first example before we dig deep into how we interpret and draw is that we are going to first go back and ask ourselves 
how do we draw linear inequalities? And now this is the first number we are going to deal with. So first ask, write your example, and then after we look at it in details. That is going to be our first example. And I want you now to start taking the words that are going to be mentioned. And one of that, those words is what we call unwanted. Unwanted region means that region that is not satisfying the inequality. Take an example, when they tell us X is greater or equal to zero, the region that is not satisfying is the region that has all those values of X that are less than zero. That is the region. So first write our question and then we start. So those who have finished, in case you have finished, please uh, feel free to animate and you tell us. I want to establish how many people have finished and how many are still working out. Have we finished members? Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Now we are going to start drawing. So I want, we are going to move at the same pace. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is that we are going to first draw uh, the first one, the second one, and the third one. So uh, we are going to find out. So I want everyone now to go to your graph, go to your graph. I'm also having my graph here. Also get to your graph book. In your graph book, I'm going to ask you to draw a line. So draw a straight line, leave two centimeters down and draw a good straight line like that. Do the same, draw a good straight line up. Okay. 
something like that. Let me hope everyone, uh, we are going to move on the same pace. Then go on and label, do the labeling that this is my line, this, this is my line, that. So we are doing the labeling, label your line. Label, label. So let me say you have code uh, this one, one, let me say this is zero, one, uh, I think this is two, uh, three, I think my four is somewhere here, five, and say maybe uh, six. This is your Y axis, and this is your X axis. So still do the same. Uh, it's not a must that you must have the same scale. So I can have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. This is eight, seven is somewhere here. Uh, nine, 10, something like that. Something like that. 11, 12. But in case, please make sure you don't leave you behind. Yes, uh, yes, Linda says, asking, are we using a pen or pencil? Uh, now, since we are learning, let's first use a pencil. Then the first inequality we are going to look at is the inequality X is greater or equal to zero. So we say that whenever you have such an inequality, first remove this greater or equal. So this is the same as X is equal to zero. Now, after knowing that the line that is needed is x is equal to zero, come on your graph and ask yourself, where is that line x is equal to zero? So the line x is equal to zero is the same as what you call the y axis. It is this line. The nature of this line, since it has greater or equal, this line is always is going to be a bounded line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come and I show that my line is here. Allow me to use any color. I'm going to show that this is my line I have drawn. And this line here is the line X is equal to zero. Then the next thing we have said that this line is greater or equal to zero, meaning that the values that are needed are the ones that are above zero, zero, one, two. And the question told us that we shared the region that is unwanted, meaning 0, 1, 2 is the wanted region, the unwanted region. So this is the region that is wanted. The unwanted region is going to be the other region. So I'll come and I shared it like that. Please let me know whether you have understood that. Please, have we understood that? Please confirm, have we understood that? Yes. Okay, good. Please, are you feel free to unmute when I ask. Uh -huh. Now we go to the second one. The second one is Y is greater or equal to zero. And this is the same as Y is equal to zero. So the line Y is equal to zero is this line here horizontally. So still I will come and I say, now I want to draw. And they, they want the region that has values that are greater than y. And those values that are greater than y, those are the values above. So the region that is needed, that is unwanted, is this region down. So I'll share it like that. In case you have a question, ask before we move on to the next one. Nikova, are we together on that point? Yes. Okay. 
Okay. Now, has everyone shaded? Have you finished shading? Have we finished shading like that? I want us to go to step yeah. by step. Yeah. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Now I go back to the question. Now we are going to do the second line, x plus y is less or equal to five. So what am I going to do? I'm going to first make a line. So this is the same as x plus y is equal to five. Then I find out what is the nature of this line, that this line is less or equal, meaning that this line must be a bordered line. Then you do like what we say, but always come and get your coordinates, x and y. So for x, I can start from zero, I go to one, I go to two, I go to three, I go to four, I go to five. I can stop there. Then I come to my equation, x plus y is equal to five. Now my x is zero. So here I have zero plus y is equal to five. Zero plus y is y is equal to five. Meaning that my value of y I'm going to obtain here is going to be five. I continue, I have x plus y is equal to five. So where there is x, I put one. One plus y is equal to five, which will mean that my y is equal to four. So I'll end up with a four here. Can you complete that table? Unless you have a question. In case you have a question, ask. Otherwise, we complete the table and may have, can we have someone raise up the hand and you tell us what you are having? Who has finished filling in the table? You can share with us what you have. I have, th I have five, four, three, two, one, and last is zero. Okay. Thank you so much. Is everyone having that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, perfect. Uh -huh. Can we go to our graph and we plot them? Plot your coordinates. So extract your coordinates that I'm going to plot 0, 5. I'm going to plot 1, 4. I'm going to plot 2, 3, like that. So we are plotting, plot, plot them, plot. Let's know if everyone knows at least how to do the plotting. Plot. So we are going back to your graph. So uh, my first point is zero 0,5. I'm also going to do the plotting such that we move at the same pace. You may leave me, zero five is here. I have one four, one four is somewhere here. I have two three, two three is somewhere here. Please yours must be very accurate. I have three two. Oh, plot that three two. Uh, you have four one, four one is here. Three two I think is somewhere here. Then we have five zero. And then after, uh, remember what we are interested in is drawing that line. And when you look at that line, like we have said, 
please, before you draw the line, know which line are you going to draw. Is it a dotted one or it is a bolded one? Since it has less or equal, it means we use a body line. So join your line boldly. Make sure you draw it very well and it must touch all the points that you have plotted. Is our line coming out very well? Yes. Okay. What about the rest? I've had one person. Are the rest yes. of the line coming? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay, very good. Uh -huh. We go to the next part. Now, the next part is finding out which region are we going to share. So we have X plus Y less or equal to five. So we have two regions. I have this region A, I have this region B. Which point can we choose? Which side are we going to consider? Which side do we? You, now for this one, when we are testing which region to shade, feel free either to pick points within this side or, or the other side of the line. So which side should we pick our points from? B. B. Okay, tell us which point are you choosing? Four, two. Four, two. Four, so, two. Four, two. So four, two. Hope it is not on the line. Is point four, two on your line or no? It's then not. It's not. Is it in this above the line? Yes. Okay, good. Now, this is your X and this is your Y. So I will come and I substitute here. So I have my X as four plus two, less or equal to five. Four plus two is six, less or equal to five. Now, after doing this, I ask myself, is six less or equal to five? Uh-huh, members, is six less or equal to five? No. 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 Yes. Now that one is an implication that no. that region. Very good. So that region is what you call the unwanted region. So that is the region you are going to shade. So now you you shade it like that. You come, you shade gently, you shade, you shade, you shade, you shade, you shade. Now, if at all this inequality was true, let me say it was two. Take an example. When you pick a point this side, let me pick point zero, zero under A. For it, you shall have X plus Y less or equal to five. So you'll have zero plus zero less or equal to five. So zero is less or equal to five. So you ask, is zero less or equal to five? That yes. So that means that is the region that is wanted. Whenever you see your inequality is being fulfilled, that is the re wanted region. Whenever you see that your inequality is not fulfilled, then that is unwanted region. Are we okay? We can continue. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we go and we draw. We are going now to the third line. I'll come back and still we do the same. I'm going to for me, I'm going to just remove this. And for you, you have to draw another table such that we also draw the second line. So we are drawing that second line they gave us. And so we are drawing, draw your simple table always, and your line is x plus three y, less or equal to nine, which is a bordered line. And then you have x plus three y is equal to nine. So substituting, and you tell me what you get. When you put in zero, where there is x, you put zero. So you have zero plus three y is equal to nine, meaning three y is equal to nine, by three by three and y is equal to three. So zero, I'll have three. I don't know whether people are on the same page. Yes, we are. Okay, complete the table. When you get
Mm -hmm. So complete the table and you draw your line. Complete the table and you draw your line. Complete the table and you draw your line. Can we share what we have when x when x is one? It is two point six seven. Two point six seven. So we shall write it as two point seven. Uh huh. Then two point three three. Yes. Two point. Two point three three. Okay. Then two. Mm -hmm. Then. Then one point six seven. One point seven. Mm -hmm. Then one point three three. Okay. Okay. Let's draw. Let's draw that line as well. And I'm going to ask you, okay, draw, uh, but I'm going to ask you one thing. Uh, uh, put here, also find for me when X is nine, what you get for Y. I'll tell you later on why. Mm -hmm. It's zero. It is zero, good. So put for me zero. So the points that I want you to plot without fail is this point here, plot this point, any point without a decimal point. Make sure you plot those three points such that we get a very good line. Plot, plot. Uh, what weekly, weekly? May I know where the challenge is? Weekly, is everything fine? Yes, it is fine. Okay. Mm. Have we drawn the line? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Even you let me draw mine. Uh, so the, I'm going for me to plot only the key points. Zero, three. Hope people have plotted that. Another one is three, two, uh, which is somewhere there. Another one is nine, zero which is somewhere here. Then please don't always forget to first check the nature of your line. Since it is less or equal, we shall still use a board line. So I'll come, I'll draw my line like that. But don't forget to label your line. So this line of ours is the same as our line. I think uh, it is X plus three Y is equal to nine. While this line here was the line, uh, I think X plus Y is equal to five. Then we are going to do the next part is to choose a coordinate, either above or below. This time around, let it be a girl to choose for us a coordinate, either above or below. Anyone, any girl to tell us which coordinate you can use? Yes, Mikova. 
I'm going to choose from A. Okay. Uh, two and one. Two and one. Members confirm. Is two and one in region A below? Yes. Yes. Very good. So I'm going to come and I say X plus three Y is... Now I bring back my original equation less or equal to nine. So we substitute, this is your X, this is your Y. So where there is X, you put two plus three times one, less or equal to nine. So I'll have two plus three, less or equal to nine. Two plus three is five, less or equal to nine. Members, is five less or equal to nine? Yes. 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 So yes. How, 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 yes, okay. So how shall we call that region? The wanted region. The wanted region. Very good. So that means now we are going to share the other part. I'll come. I share. I share. I share. I share like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. Is that okay, members? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It is very fine, eh? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now I want to uh, ask: Is everyone having a graph like that, or some yes. people like? Yes. 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 Okay. Very good. Now okay. that we have already about now. nine marks. We have about already nine marks. That means that what we are going to look out for are the rest of the marks. So we are going to fish where are the three marks are such that we get the all the what or the twelve out of the twelve. Now the rest of the marks are going to be coming from identifying what we call a feasible feasible region and the feasible points. So this region that has remained unshaded is what we call the feasible region. And it is from this region that we are going to choose the points to use. I go back to my question. The question is asking, use your graph to find the values of X and Y, which give the maximum values for both X plus Y and X plus three Y. What are we going to do? We are going to draw a table. I ask now if you want to draw a table. Now in this table, you are going to have to a coordinate X and Y. And then we are testing X plus Y. Now X plus Y and X plus three Y is what we call our objective function. So we shall have X plus Y, and then we shall have X plus three Y. So they're asking us, draw a table, let it be very long. Let it be long, let it be long, let it be long. We are going to choose points. Uh, let me first look in the chat. Okay, we are going to look. Now, I want everyone now to go back to your graph. Look at your graph. All the points you choose must be either along the line or inside here, that region that has remained. Can we start choosing? The first person, tell us your point you are choosing. Two one. Two one. Is two one inside? Yes. Uh -huh, good. Uh, members continue to choose. For me, I'm going to just write out the coordinates. Three one. Three one. Three, one. Uh -huh. Good. One, two. One, two. Members, please make sure you confirm that those points are within that region. In case you send a point not there, you alert us. Mm -hmm. One, one. One, one. Uh -huh. Two, two. Two, two. Four, one. Three, zero. Four, one. Uh -huh. Three, Three, zero. Three, zero. Uh -huh. Zero, two. Zero two. Uh huh. Please continue. 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 Zero two. Zero two. Three two. Three 
two uh -huh. members complete and they must be integers so no no points there's no points mm -hmm. are they done five zero five zero please finish any other okay let me check mine okay now i want to let you know that always when you are checking don't forget the corners always the sharp points will give you those values eh? they will give you good values for maximum and minimum so never forget them so this point here is very crucial most so when your graph is bolded so you can check out this point you can check out this point the point here any point inside here will always well work so let's use the points we have very good now uh, when we use now can we put here x plus y when we put two and one what would be our answer here three three, three. very good uh-huh next four good three uh-huh two, two. Uh -huh. Four. Mm -hmm. Five. Mm -hmm. Three. Mm -hmm. Two. Mm -hmm. Five. Mm -hmm. And five. Okay, good. Uh -huh. Now we go and fill in X plus Y. Five. Five. Someone is telling us five members. Is it five? Confirm also from your side. Yes, this is okay. Continue. Six. Sure. Yeah. Six. Okay. Continue. Seven. Seven. Okay. Continue. Four. Uh, continue. Eight. Uh -huh. Continue. Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. Three. Three. Continue. Six. Mm -hmm. Nine. Mm -hmm. Five. 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 Thank you. Now the question is asking find the values of X and Y, which give the maximum values for both x plus y and x plus by looking at the answers we have obtained in the first in the first one what is the maximum value it's five five uh -huh. in the next one what is the maximum value six maximum maximum eight eight maximum nine, nine. Nine. Uh -huh. nine. The maximum is nine. Now, nine. You, nine. Very good. Now, when you look in both, we, which one is giving us that those values? X plus three. No, which like which one is giving you a maximum here and a maximum here? Which coordinate? Three, two. Three, two. Three, two. Three, two. Three, two. Three, two, very good. This one here. So that means that our answer here, the values of X and two, the one that gives us will be three and two. Those are the values of X. Members, is that fine? Yes. 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 Okay. Have we finished that and we look at another number? Almost. Almost. Okay. Finish.
And we continue. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, we are going, I, I'm, I'm going to, I want to, let me check out. I know there was a number here. Let me check whether there is any other number that you try out in your free time. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have any here. But we go on and now we are going to look at the second part. Uh, we call the word problem. Are you seeing the word? Yeah. So that is what we are going to try out now. What is important is you forming the inequalities. The moment you form the inequalities, it means uh, you're on track. But one, more in, one interesting bit is that once for it, you fail, you like you, you mark yourself. You mark yourself. So first write the question. So we are writing the question first. Okay, have we finished? No. Okay.
Oh, someone is saying, Vanessa, the word's clear. Oh, we we'll zoom in a bit. Hope Vanessa, now the words are okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Have people finished? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now uh, we are going to go to the next part of generating those uh, inequalities. Uh, but as we are generating them, one thing I want to let you know is that uh, in the questions or in standard questions of your name, they are going to be letting you know which variables you are going to use, which letters you are going to use. Eh? Take an example. When you look at this question, they always say where X represents this, Y represents that. So they will always be specifying that X is this, Y is that. So, but for some questions, like now this one, they have not specified. So we are going to, to uh, simplify it. So the first thing we always do when we are solving is that we need to first know you read the question, put it in your own context, understand it, relate it to real life. So we are going to say, for this question, we are going to say X is going to represent the number of apples. And Y is going to represent the number of oranges. Now, like I told you, always the first inequalities we are going to be writing uh, what we call the non-negative inequalities. Why? We cannot have oranges that are negative. We can't have apples that are negative. So the first inequalities you are going to write is what we call the non-negative inequalities. And non-negative inequality, it means that your x is greater or equal to zero and y is greater or equal to zero. Members, are we fine on that? Yes. Yes. So that is yeah. the first. Yes, that is the first mark you get. In fact, for all linear for all linear programming problems, these two inequalities are going to be appearing. So for you, you just know. For all the questions you are going to be calculating, these two are going to be what appearing. Now we read the question. Judith has been sent to the nearby supermarket to buy some apples and oranges. Apples cost 500 each, oranges cost 250 each. She's given only 2,000 to spend. That is the first inquiry we are going to write. Let me check whether people can write it. I want you to use the chat. We don't know how many oranges is she going to buy? How many apples is she going to buy? In the chat, you first find for me the total amount she's going to spend in the chat. Are we getting the question? No, sir. Now, I want to find out. In case, I want you to first write for me and just I want you to write for me an equation. What is going to be the cost of the apples? Let me start from that. What is going to be the cost of an app? Mm -hmm. The cost of the apples that she's going to buy. What is going to be that total cost? 2,000. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know how many apples she's going to buy. 
but you know that each apple is costing 500. Are you getting not yet? Be 500 times X. Ah, uh -huh, very good. It's going to be 500 times X, which is 500 X. Members, is this fine? Yes. Yes, that is the apple. That means that when- Yes. Okay, that means that when she buys one apple, X will be one. When she buys two apples, X will be two. Very good. Then we go to the next one. What is going to be the total cost of oranges? It's 250 times Y, which is 221. Very good. Members, are these two things making sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very good. Now we come here. They are telling us that she is given only 2000 to spend on that purchase. What are we going to do? It means that on this purchase, she has only that amount. Allow me to share my white screen now. Is, my, is the white screen on? Yeah. Okay. Now, what does it mean? The available, I'm going to say that the available money is only shillings or thousand. That means that she's not going, she's not given anything beyond that. So that means I'm going to get my, I can summarize it in a table, don't mind. Like in my table, I have here, these are my uh, apples. And we have said that the apples, this is like the cost. The apples are going to be costing, uh, apples is going to be 200. Apples is 500. Eh? Yeah. X and the other one is 250. Y, oranges. But the amount of money available is what? 2000. That means we shall say 500 X plus 250 Y must be equal to what? 2000. 2000. But here we are going to deal with inequalities. So that means to be less or equal to 2000 shillings. Why less or equal? Because they have told us that the maximum amount of money given is 2000. Meaning you cannot go beyond 2,000 when you are spending. You either spend 2,000 or you spend something less than that. Are we together members on that? Yeah. So now, yes, our, okay. So our first equation. Yes. Okay. So these were our first equation. This was your first equation. This is your second equation. And then this is your third equation. We want six, eh? Huh. Now we go back. Uh, I want to go back. Uh, I go back to my question. Then they went on and told us that she must not buy more. Hope you are seeing that, that, that screen. Which no. screen are you seeing? The white one. No. You are seeing the white one now? Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. The white one, eh? Yes, white one. Not yes. Okay, I have removed. I have removed. Let me share again. Uh -huh. Then the second one was saying that she must not buy more than two apples. That is another inquiry. She must not buy more than two apples. Your mom has told you, don't buy more than two apples. So how are we going to write that mathematically? I remember telling you, I showed you the first table we dealt with, not more than, which inequality do we use? Less or equal to. Less or equal to. Members, how to get on that? Yeah. Yes. So, but our X are the apples, so I write X is less or equal to two. Very good. Now how we go to the next one. And she must buy at least four oranges. 
here the mathematical word is at least. Members, what did we say? At least means what? Which inequality? Greater or equal to. Greater or equal to. So I will say y greater or equal to four. Members, are we together? Yeah. Yes. How many? Yes. Many? yes. How many? Okay. How many yes. are those? Five. Mm -hmm. Five, eh? We continue. She must also buy at least, now this is another mathematical word, six fruits all together because her family has six members. Members, which inequality are we going to write that? You are greater six people. Or equal to. Yes, it's going to be? Greater than or equal to. Uh -huh, yes, it's going to be greater or equal to six. But what are we going to have here? X plus Y is greater than or equal to six. Very good. X plus Y is greater or equal to six. Members, how many inequalities are those? There are five. They are five. Are we together? Six. Yeah. There are six, eh? Members count very well. Are they six? They are six. They are six. Yeah, ah. six. They are six. Very good. Now, uh, let me share the white screen such that now we can summarize them very well. Is the white screen back? No, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. So, okay, good. So this was one of them. Then you had y greater or equal to zero. Then you had another one, which was x less or equal to two. You had another one, y greater or equal to four. Uh, you had another one, x plus y is greater or equal to six. Then the last one was 500x plus 250y is less or equal to 2,000. Now, for such an inequality, you reduce it further to avoid having very many zeros. So members, can we first reduce it further? And you tell me what yeah. you are getting. 2x plus y is less than or equal to 8. Very good. 2x plus y is less than or equal to 8. eight. Members, is everyone getting that? Yeah. Okay. So I'll have that. And this is my six. Now, what are we going to do next? We are going to draw all those inequalities on one graph. How are we together? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Now, what are you going to take note of? Now, what you are going to take note of, uh, let me stop because you are going to be completing this number as part of our homework. Is that fine? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay, it's going to be part of our homework, but I want to first share something uh, to let you know. Now here, you after drawing your graph, you will shade the unwanted region. After doing so, you come, you list the possible combinations. You remember the table we had? Yeah. You list all the combinations of the purchase she can make. Then you find out how many apples and oranges should be purchased so that you minimize her expenditure while maximizing the purchase. Now, our objective function is 2x plus y greater or equal to six, because this is the equation that is talking about the money available. So any combination there will give us the amount of money this person is going to be spending. I don't know whether you are getting it. This equation is the one that is going to be giving us the objective function. So, however, this is not the... Okay, but this is just an equation. So to get our objective function, we shall say is equal to 500x plus 250y. Now this is the one 
you are going to use to find out that when he buys two oranges and two mangoes, how much money is she going to spend? Now, this is what we call now the objective function. Okay. Members, is that fine? Yeah. Okay. So that is one number that you are going to complete. And we are going to open the chart such that you can be in a position to post there what you are coming up as your solution. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Then uh, can I add another number? Yes. Okay. Let me share my screen uh, such that we have two numbers for exercise. Another number, you can write it. What is this point to you for this day? Is the question clear? And all the good things about to us. Yes. Okay. So you are trying out that number and then finishing that number. Uh, can we open the WhatsApp group today for people to post in some answers? Would you have completed in the evening such that we can post, we can open? Okay. Has everyone finished writing? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we are going to stop at this point. And then we shall start from there uh, when we meet again. But I understand many of your friends, I think, have left for school. Not so.